Okay, so are we ready? Let's get started with four minutes, please. Four minutes of full stroke front crawl back onto the cords, onto the cords. Are we ready? Let's go. So four minutes, please, four minutes. Full stroke front crawl with that submerged recovery. Okay, we're still rotating the upper body. Okay. We're switching from side to side. We're popping the elbow out wide. We're remembering to pull with the palm and the forearm. As early as you can, we're trying to see that vertical forearm pointing down towards the bottom of the pool, the fingertips to the elbows. One unit pointing down towards the bottom of the pool as early as you can. And certainly, hopefully, by the time it reaches the eyes, that would be fantastic remember so coming up on one minute done coming up on one minute three minutes to go use this as your warm-up nice and light hopefully you got the message about nice light uh, chords uh, nothing too aggressive with the resistance but obviously when you go 30 35 minutes and there's going to be little there's going to be less interruptions less rest compared to normal pool swimming it's gonna to start to fatigue a little bit. You are gonna feel that in the triceps. So nice and light to start with, nice and light. Keep the head still on this first one. We'll introduce some breathing later when we go to the drills. Good work, everyone, good work. Don't forget to push down. I'm sort of, I'll, I'll move around a little bit so you can sort of see where I am with this. But just because I'm focusing on the top half of the arm pull at the moment, you can't really see the back end, but there are, there is some hip movement as I switch from side to side and I stretch all the way through. And I'm bringing that shoulder into the chin for that nice streamlined position. Okay, Kim's just joined. Carry on guys, carry on. Good, good. Okay, so coming up just over two minutes, two minutes, two minutes to go on the full stroke front crawl before we switch into some drills. Okay. Good, good. For some reason it put everyone in the waiting room um, and did not let you flow straight into the movement. Okay. So, Kim, thanks for joining us. We've just started the first block of full stroke front crawl. We're gonna blend between some single arm drills and some decreasing blocks of full stroke front crawl. If your stretch cords are set up horizontally, just think about your body position. Obviously, you're pivoting at the hips. If you're set up with the stretch cords in a vertical position, obviously, we can roll the hips a little bit more and it just flows a little bit more smoothly, okay? So 45 seconds to go on this first block, 45 seconds. Remember to pivot at the elbow, pop the elbow out wide. We're pulling with the palm from the fingertips through to the elbow, pushing the water back all the way back down towards the feet. Okay, keep the head still for now. We'll introduce some breathing or some head turning. Obviously, hopefully you've all been breathing so far. Otherwise, the session will be quite short. Good work, everyone. Last 15 seconds of full stroke front crawl. And then if you've got your light dumbbells or if you've got your tins of beans or if you've got nothing at all, doesn't matter, we're gonna launch into a minute of single arm drill, a minute of single arm drill. And I'm gonna take you through that fully. Okay. Five, four, three, two, and one. Good work, everyone, good work. Okay, the single arm drill, the single arm drill. We're looking for an extended position, hands as far apart as possible, pull through, make that connection with the water, and I'm gonna add my light dumbbells here, just so I get a little bit more sense of slowing things down. Stand up tall, regardless of whether you've got your cords or not, okay, you shouldn't have your cords, whether they're horizontal or vertical, just ditch the cords for now, and go with me on this movement, standing upright. So, we're recovering, we're stretching back out, bring the shoulder through into the chin, set the catch, pull the opposite shoulder through and extend back out in front. There's our single arm drill performed really nicely. And remember, when we're gonna take a breath, we pause the head, keep the head still until the arm stops moving, 
and then we take that breath to the side, okay? To the side, away from the arm we're pulling with, okay? In three, in two, in one, good work. Let's switch to the other side, other side, please. Remember, fingertips to elbow is that pulling phase, coming through, pulling the shoulder. Let me just admit one more person. Here we go. Carry on with your single arm, please. Carry on with your single arm. Good work, good work. Single arm. So pulling through, making that connection. The body position is important. Okay. There's some reason. There we go. Keep admitting people. Keep admitting people. System. Good, good, good. Okay. So single arm drill. Historically, we swam this drill with the arm outstretched in front, okay? But now we do it with the unused arm down by the side. In three, two, one, let's go over to full stroke, please. Over to full stroke. Down to three minutes, please. Down to three minutes of full stroke front crawl. Now, before we go back to our technical element, okay? Into our cord position. Good work, everyone. Three minutes, please. Three minutes of full stroke front crawl onto the cords before we go back to our drill, please. Okay, remember, take the drill position, take what we felt, learned, experienced in the drill, bring that through into the full stroke, okay? Remember, we're switching the body from side to side just as the drill was helping. We're pivoting wide with the elbow from head on. That position should look something like that, like you're making a, a diamond under the water as the elbow pops out and I'm taking that into the full stroke, okay? So back on the cords, whether you're vertical or whether you're horizontal, the wherever you've got your cords mounted, pop the elbow wide, keep the hand central pulling under the body. And we're working on the symmetry of the stroke to keep pulling you forwards in a nice, balanced, straight position, okay? Same speed, same amount of pressure from side to side, same angles at the elbows, same speed of the hands, okay? And that's gonna keep us nice and straight and that's gonna translate nicely into a stroke that should keep you swimming really straight in open water rather than wasting time lifting the head unnecessarily, more than is usual, more than is necessary, and interrupting the flow of your stroke. 75 seconds to go, please. So about 75 seconds to go of the full stroke before we go back to our drill. Remember the shoulders are switching from side to side just as this drill promoted. Keep the head nice and still. We'll do the breathing during the drill for now. Just work on building up the speed a little bit, but don't lose the length. Don't lose the length of the stroke. Keep pushing through, finish down past the hips. Don't exit early. Use the tricep to finish at the back of the stroke. Push through, push through. Good, good, good. About 35 seconds to go on this block before we go back to our single arm. And I'm gonna use a, a slightly lighter dumbbell now. So when it comes to the single arm drill in our full stroke, in, in our swimming sessions, we make it easier with paddles, and I'm sort of equating that to a slightly heavier dumbbell. So I get a feel, I get a, a hold on the water, the paddle and the heavier weight sort of help me feel my way through the drill. So we're gonna to switch to a lighter paddle uh, next, or a, a, just a, a smaller dumbbell, okay? And that's gonna sort of make me concentrate on my pathways a little bit more. In three, two, one, I'm going to my lighter dumbbell now. Single arm, please, single arm. So from up top, pull through, bring the shoulder through to the chin. We've got one minute on the left arm, one minute on the right arm. Work on your technique, okay? Keep the head still, head still while the arm is in motion and extend out and then we get the breath to the side. Try to time that so you make that connection. As you set the catch position here, you're starting to pull the shoulder through. Okay, when it comes to the full stroke front crawl, we're switching from side to side to side, and that's what this drill helps with beautifully. Okay, carry on, last 15 seconds on the one arm, doesn't matter whether you started with the left or the right, we're gonna switch in a minute and get a minute done 
on each arm. Keep the head still, head still, head still, and extend back out, get that breath into the side. In three, in two, in one, good work everyone, and switch through to the other side, other arm please. Again, we're looking for symmetry. We're looking for that same position of the elbow, the width that pops out to the side, helping expose the forearm, enabling you to push water all the way back, pushing it down towards the feet. Head still until you stop moving the arms, and then you get that breath in, in between, okay? Really important skill to work on in swimming, keeping the head still, head still, and unless you are breathing, unless you are lifting to sight, the more the head stays still, the better everything will move and you'll keep something in a much straighter alignment. Good, everyone. Good, good, good. Remember, catch, and then you really start to time that and bring the shoulder through towards the chin. If you need a demonstration, uh, have a look on the YouTube Swim for Try channel and the single arm has been uploaded and you can see how that's done with the paddles, with the hand position, and then finally with the fist clenched. In three, two, one. Good work, everyone. Let's go back to our stretch cords, please. Back to our cords. Just a two minute block now. Should be feeling warm. Might be able to put a little bit more speed into this now, okay? But don't forget, we're looking at that switching from side to side that the single arm drill brought to us. Pulling with the forearm, trying to make that um, horizontal because obviously I'm standing upright, I'm not bent over with my stretch cords. I'm trying to make this horizontal here by the time it reaches the eyes, okay? And if I was in the water, bent over, here we go. Hope you can I would make that vertical before it reached the eyes as well. That's an early vertical forearm that you've probably heard an awful lot about. Okay, keep going, pushing through. Working the triceps strong at the back of the stroke. Don't get lazy now, finishing early, exiting. Above the hip, keep reaching for the knees, reaching for the knees, switching from side to side. Last 45 seconds before we go back to our drills, please. So Mondays is billed as technical endurance, okay? So we're gonna build up 30, 35 minutes of solid work, but just punctuated with these drills, just to remind us, improve our proprioception skills, improve our technique, start to work on these on dry land. Who knows when we're gonna be back in the water, but it's all good, building some muscle memory and thinking about what we'll be doing when we do hit the water again. Okay, in three, two, one, fantastic. Okay, ditch the cords. One minute on the left arm, one minute on the right arm. This time, I'm gonna just go nice and slow without any weight on my hands, okay? No dumbbells this time, no tins of beans. Nice and slow, and I'm really trying to, maybe even try to close your eyes and just get an awareness of where the arm is, if you can see yourself on your screen, try to think about how you'd be doing this in the water. Obviously the legs would be involved. There'd be some kicking happening. The hips would be rotating from side to side. We're trying to pull this shoulder through towards the chin and just make that body shape, that connection there. Okay, single arm with the head still. If you are gonna take a breath, take it when that arm comes back out into that Superman kicking position. Okay, here I'm flying through the water, head still, and when the arm stops, I get the breath in and then I go again. Okay, good work everyone. In three, in two, in one, and let's swap over to the other side, please. Swap over to the other side. Nice and slow, make that connection. Try a couple with the eyes closed. Think about what muscles are working. We are introducing some recovery above the surface of the water this time. With the cords I like just to keep the arms submerged, keep them, keeping them about 180 degrees to each other and just sort of pinging under the body. Okay, now we're getting some rotation in and it's a little bit easier going for the shoulder. And whether you rotate with a high elbow or with a straight arm, both have merits, both have their sort of pros and cons. I'm not going to sort of discuss that now, but whatever it is you're doing, just feel like you're catching the water under the water, okay? That's what we really am focusing on. Okay, 
in three, in two, in one. Fantastic. There's our 15 minute block of work done. First round done. First round done. Have a little drink, shake the arms out. Okay, have a little stretch. I'm going to put mine against the wall here and just sort of roll into them just to get some feeling back into the triceps on both sides, like so. You could just put the palm, the back of the hands together and just stretch through a little bit behind. Okay, but just loosen them out, stretch them out, shrug the shoulders. And in about 30 seconds, we're gonna repeat that, okay? So it's basically two different movements. It's full stroke front crawl with a submerged recovery, and it's the single arm where we're just working the drill, we've got the surface recovery in, and we're just flicking between the two of those, okay? Um, if you're in that horizontal position, okay? If you're in a horizontal position bent over and you're pulling the cords underneath, just try to bring the back down as horizontal as you comfortably can and keep, try to, as best you can, involve the hips a little bit, okay? It is trickier in that horizontal position to get the rotation in, which is why I think it's important that we do focus on that. So full stroke front crawl as best we can. I'm trying to shift, and that's why I like the cords in that vertical position. But if you're horizontal, it could just get a little bit flattened, okay? So then ditch the cords, stand upright, and then we're gonna do various drills to bring the full body rotation in just as we would. Front crawl, front crawl, front crawl, switching from side to side to side, okay? Good stuff. Are we ready? Four minutes, there again, four minutes at the front. Here's our little bit of endurance work. We're then gonna correct it with some drills and then bring the amounts down slowly bit by bit. In three, two, one, ready. Here we go, four minutes please, four minutes. If you can add a little bit more tension, now we're nicely warmed up, wouldn't be a bad thing. Okay, I might take a sort of a, a step lower, but then I would disappear. So I'm just gonna stay where I am, just so you can see it's catching position, trying to switch that into, from that vertical position over to horizontal as early as possible. And if you need help with that, if you need help with that, Again, on the YouTube, because we did uh, some different drills last week, I've uploaded the relevant drills. Have a look for the thumb catch drill, okay, which was a nice position just to practice that switching. And we do that in the water. You can try it on dry land with your cords, okay, and that will help that position. So look for the thumb catch position, okay. Nice, simple drill in the water or on dry land, and it will just help you achieve that early vertical forearm that a little bit earlier. And if you're gonna practice these sort of swimming movements under some resistance, you might as well get the movements correct. So in two, three, four weeks, who knows, when we're back in the water, you'll have done a several thousand repetitions, all nicely accurate with this fantastic technique, and your swimming's gonna come along nicely. Okay, so, if you do want to incorporate some breathing into this cord work, the important thing is that while we're catching, okay, we still need that, that pivot from the elbow, even though you're turning to the side. What often happens is we lean on that straight arm, we lean on that straight arm to help prop ourselves up for the breath, and we lose that ability to go forwards. You still want to catch the water, like so, even though you're turning to the side. I've done several workshops now with a couple of, uh, uh, a very big London club. We had 40 swimmers. We had 40 swimmers in the water and only two people managed to set a catch position while they were breathing. Every time they took a breath, they would lean on that straight arm to help stabilize the head. And that's a stroke wasted. Every breathing cycle, every breathing cycle, they send themselves up rather than pull themselves forwards. Um, and if you think about how often you breathe, that's an awful lot of wasted strokes. So the catch position, you read a lot about it, you hear a lot about it, um, for good reason, okay? It's the thing that moves you forwards. Now, I'm not actually putting too much effort into that catch position because all I'm doing really, if you think about it, is just shifting and setting up my paddle for the pull, okay? So as the elbow pivots and turns over, 
I'm actually moving into the position. Once I am in that vertical, horizontal, whichever way you want to call it, however you're standing, then I can really drive and add some of that lat strength that you read about that the summoners have, and they're very strong through the lat and tricep region. But the first part is soft as you set the position, soft. And sometimes people like to think about slow to fast as they accelerate, slow to fast as they accelerate the stroke, okay? If you can add a little bit of that, even better, even better. Last 30 seconds, everyone, before we go back to our full, uh, back to our drill, please, back to our drill. I'm gonna go back to my uh, heavier dumbbells, just so I can slow the movement down. Think about how I would create the movement, the hold on the water with that larger paddle in the water. And then the middle block, I'll go with the lighter dumbbell and then no dumbbells on that third round. In five, four, three, two, one. Fantastic, good stuff everyone. Okay, single arm please, single arm. Okay, I've got my dumbbell. I'm gonna set my sort of Superman flying position here. Okay, this one stays in the pocket and I pull through and I recover narrow. I pull through, connect the shoulder rotation, keep the head still, and then I'm breathing to the side. Head still, head still while the arm and body are in motion, turn to the side. Fantastic. Good, everyone. Okay, imagine you've got the legs and the hips involved, probably got some fins on as well, just to make this a little bit easier. Take the breath in between when all the arms stop moving. Good work. Last 15 seconds. Nice and slow. Work on your technique. Have a look at this. It's called the Advanced Single Arm. It's on the YouTube channel. I'll email it to you if you need some clarification. Historically, in three, two, one, let's swap arms, please. Years ago, we used to do single arm drill with both arms sort of in front and then taking that one to the side, okay? And if you look from head on, carry on doing what you're doing, but here's the problem with one arm left in front. Okay, I swing full stroke, switching from side to side. Then I'm gonna do a drill that if you watch the shoulder, literally stops my ability to rotate fully from side to side, okay? So we do this drill with one arm in the pocket, it never leaves the pocket, and we get the full rotation involved from side to side. And hence, the old fashioned one, it's still got its place, it helps people build some confidence, time the breathing, but really in terms of body position, this is the one you want. Add your fins for accuracy. Try it with a snorkel just to get to grips with it, but ideally you eventually switch to not using a snorkel because you can sort of keep the head still, no body rotation, and just cycle through with the air. In three, two, one, good stuff everyone. Let's go back to our chords. We're down to three minutes, down to three minutes. If you can give yourself a little bit more tension, but not lose the length in the stroke, that would be amazing. Just noticed how wonky our light is. I might have to fix that later. It was probably me doing some exercise earlier. Good work, everyone, good work. Three minutes. Arms might be getting a little fatigued now, but do your best. I would say, since it's Monday, and it is technical endurance, Take that step forward, just so you can focus on the technique, focus on the drill coming through, shaping, molding, improving the full stroke, rather than sort of shortening and grinding away with an effort. We did that on Friday. The Friday is the big fitness session, but this one is the technique. It's all about the technique. Try to bring your technique in, the rotation, the catch position, and don't let it ping exit up above the hips, try to reach the knees, try to reach the knees with every stroke. If you can exit this session, gentlemen, with a little subtle rash on the shoulders, that will be a job well done. Good stuff. Coming up on halfway, halfway through this block, everyone. Good, good, good. If you're gonna add some breathing in, Remember, we're still trying to catch, even though we're turning to the side. And for the purposes, this might also be a good opportunity to practice alternating the breathing. 
if this is quite new to you in terms of the switching the shoulder from side to side, often it's the lack of rotation as much as anything that causes problems with the ability to breathe. So often we're okay breathing to one side, but we don't enjoy breathing to the whichever other side it might be. Okay, but if you switch, you get the shoulder out of the way, you get that clearance, you get that window of opportunity, should be able to get the breath in. Okay, good, good, good. Last 35 seconds before we go back to our drills. Okay, so I'm going to adopt to this last 30 seconds, I'm going to put in a, a breathing pattern every third stroke. Now, if you're going to suddenly switch to that in the pool, that's a lot less air. And it might not be a mechanical thing, it might be a fitness thing as well to take into effect. That's a lot less air over the course of a length if you switch from every second stroke to every three. So what we often do is take two to one side, and then we do our three across to the other side. So that way we just keep the lungs topped up and we're not running short of air. In three, two, one, fantastic back to our single arm. Okay, I've got the lighter dumbbells now. Okay, so I just need to be a little bit more aware, slow things down, be a little bit in mind of the positions, the trajectory. I'm still trying to pull the hand under the center of the body. And this is quite a tricky one. If you can see from head on, I'm trying to keep that central, even though the body's rotating, and to keep the head still, that's quite a skill that needs to be worked on. And you might want to start with that, just with that simple torpedo drill in the mirror and just work on keeping the head still and allowing the body to rotate from side to side just to help you get a feel for that, okay? Head still, switching from side to side and then bring in the single arm and the body should be doing exactly the same, okay? Switching so the shoulder starts high, pulls through to the chin, shoulder finishes high. So up on top, pull through, get the breath in between. No, I don't want to upgrade just yet. If you'll excuse me. Good, good. Okay. In three, two, one, let's switch sides, please. Let's switch sides. If it helps, just warm up a little bit with the shoulder rotating from side to side, folks, on keeping the head still. And then you want that exact same movement, even though that arm is in play. Good, good, good. The elbow goes wide, the hand stays central. And then if both arms are doing exactly the same thing, that should keep us nice and straight in our open water when we don't have the luxury of those lane ropes, those tiles on the bottom, those nice lines throughout the square building, keeping us moving forwards. And the more balanced and symmetrical the stroke is, the less often you should lift your head which even with a wetsuit on is still gonna put the brakes on, okay? Three, two, one, fantastic. Let's go back to our cores, okay? If we are upping the tempo a little bit, remember we are still trying to keep everything mirrored. Symmetry, length, the speed, the angles. If the left and the right perfectly reproduce each other's movements, we stay straight, we stay balanced. We don't build up any overuse injuries. And we make the stroke really strong. If you want a good current example of a great swimmer, have a look on YouTube for the Rio Olympics. Katie Ledicki, young American swimmer. There's some great underwater footage of her technique. And you will see, even though she's in the pool, um, and obviously the clarity is good and everything's working to keep her swimming straight, you will see absolute mirror image between her left and right arm. Uh, and I think that's the key to good open water swimming, perfect symmetry between left and right. So on race day, having trained breathing to both sides in some capacity, if you've worked on your symmetry, worked on those same movements repeatedly over and over again, on race day, you might need to only breathe to one side. You might need the extra air. The sun might be in your eyes or there might be a swimmer right by the side of you. You may have to switch to single side breathing, but you still, you can be confident that your stroke is gonna keep you nice and straight because you've done the thousands and thousands of repetitions mixing it up in training. If you can, uh, if you only breathe to one side, 
go back to some simple torpedo drill, learning to switch the, uh, the body from side to side with the fins on, okay, that's probably one of the best things you can do to start to learn to breathe to both sides, okay? In three, two, one, fantastic. Last little bit of single arm. I'm going without any dumbbells this time, so I really need to focus because the hand is very light and it does, now the arms are a bit tired. It does want to sort of tremble its way through this, but I'm working and focusing on keeping this as accurate as possible. So as soon as that fingertips to elbow turn over to here, I'm then gonna to try to keep the palm facing the wall I'm swimming away from, which today is obviously the floor. Okay, don't sort of lose the hand too much, lose it, palm down towards the bottom of the pool. Those are the things that eat into your speed, eat into your efficiency, send the stroke count up. So as soon as it turns over to here, palm pushes through, okay? Let me finish my stroke at the back. And again, even adding a little bit of a wrist movement at the back of the stroke as I finish through, okay? And that way all the water goes down for as long as possible. Good, good, good. In three, two, one, let's go over to the other side to finish it off. And remember, if you are gonna add the breathing motion, get the fingertips back out in front into that Superman flying position, turn to the side. Fingertips back out in front, turn to the side. Good, everyone. Fingertips to elbow is that pulling phase. Hold the water, feel it anchor, and then that should give you that and sort of submerged door, you know, like a pulling a door handle, and that should enable you to bring the shoulder through strongly. Set it up slowly, and then accelerate through. Set the position slowly, drive it through, fantastic. Good, good, good. In three, two, one.